please subscribe and like the video. Hope you enjoy. Okay, let's go. The United States is known for many things, Mount Rushmore, Disney World, and McDonald's. And yes, that's all nice on the surface, but going deeper into the shadows though, each state has its own very unique urban legends and mysteries. Some tales that are very interesting and others that are just kind of dumb. In this video, I wanted to rank each state's urban legends and see which ones are truly horrifying and which ones are meh. I'm going to try my best to cover the popular ones, but I can't please everyone. So if you have one that you know or that your cousin told you that one time, write it down below. I'll be happy to read them. Okay, let's begin. Oh, and by the way, since we have like 50 states, I'll give a quick synopsis of the urban legend. Remember, I'm ranking them based off if they're scary to me. Our opinions might be different. Okay, now let's begin. A woman named Mary spent her night dancing with her boyfriend, but soon things got heated between the two of them and Mary left the ballroom. She began walking in the middle of the night on the side of the road, then out of nowhere she was struck and killed by a hit and run driver. The driver was never identified. It is said that she will wait on the side of the road and ask for a ride. When someone offers, she vanishes. Ghost stories always get me, but they're a little played out. And this one isn't really scary, but kind of sad to me. September 16th, 1932. A young actress named Peg Entwistle, stressed and saddened from not being able to make her big break in Hollywood, decided to set a course for the Hollywood sign late at night. She began to climb the H on the sign as she jumped off of it 45 feet to her death. The next day, a hiker found her body and a note that read, I am afraid. I am a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, that would have saved a lot of pain. It is said that she will appear late at night if you're hiking near the area. Once again, the story is really tragic and sad, but seeing a ghost lady late at night while I'm walking, oh no no no, no. that's definitely on the scary side. Area 51. Where to even begin? From aliens to top secret government experiments, the whole place is definitely a mystery. And yeah, I'd say it's scary because we don't know what goes on there. I mean, what do they have? Do they have aliens? Is Area 51 a real SCP facility? Who knows? So because of that, I'm definitely putting this one on the scary tier. A logger, while working, slipped onto one of his saw blades and was immediately met with deep cuts and gashes. His entire body was covered in bandages. He then was quickly rushed to the hospital. While on the way, the road was slippery due to a horrible storm. The ambulance on Highway 101 crashed and the man was gone. Days went on and he was never found. It is said that if you're on Highway 101 in Oregon, you will smell rotten flesh and see bloody bandages. You better run before the ghost of Bandage Man appears. Bandage Man does look cool, it's just not scary. His backstory is nice, but the realism isn't just doing it for me. Sorry, guy. A group of Native Americans who lived in the Idaho Massacre Rocks were going through horrible times of famine and were forced the mothers of babies to drown them in a nearby river. It is said that if you're in the Massacre Rocks along the river, you might hear the cries of the babies screaming for their mothers. Yeah, you know what, this one is chilling, a tragic story, urban legend, you know, for sure, this is scary. Mel's Hole Located by Ellensburg, Washington, a bottomless pit that could have a depth of 80,000 feet, said to have mystical powers, but nobody knows the exact location of this hole, only the man who discovered it, Mel Waters, but some even say he never even existed, while others say he disappeared after making this discovery. Personally me, I have a fear of giant cave systems and just anything that has to do with underground, anything. It just scares the heck out of me, definitely marking this one as scary. The petrified forest made a national monument is said to put a curse on anyone who steals a piece of petrified wood. Bad things start to happen, like medical issues, going to jail, or even death. The bad luck doesn't go away until you return the wood you stole. Cursed objects, cursed places have this mystery to them. Are they actually cursed, or is there just a huge coincidence? Just in case it is, and the petrified forest is listening, it's going on the scary tier. A family a long time ago lived in Luana's Canyon. The father would constantly leave to find food or things he could use so he could feed his family. One time he left and never returned. The mother and her kids waited. The kids screaming with hunger echoed the canyon. The mother couldn't take it anymore, so she murdered her kids and took her own life after. The ghost of the family is said to haunt the now named Slaughterhouse Canyon. Supposedly this story can't be proven to be real or not, but back then times were tough, so I think it's real. Like the other ghost stories, it's just tragic, you know? I don't think it's scary at all. The Flathead Lake There's a chance that you could spot or perhaps encounter a giant eel-like creature known as the Flathead Monster. First spotted over 100 years ago, this beast has had multiple eyewitnesses, but come on, like it's just fake. I know there are a lot of species of fish we don't know exist, but I don't believe this one, and it doesn't scare me like some of the other ones, so I'm saying fake and not scary. While hunting or perhaps taking in the beautiful sights of Wyoming, you might run into the jackalope, a rabbit with antlers growing out of its head. Now, sorry if you don't know this, but jackalopes aren't real, but some rabbits can develop a disease that does make them grow antlers due to a virus, but even if jackalopes were real, they're just too cute to be scary. Riverdale Road in Colorado is said to be one of the gateways to hell because of the many things that have happened there, Native American burial grounds, murders, and sacrifices. It is said that if you're driving down the road, you might encounter demon children and the sound of laughter, and kids laughing and playing in the darkness. 
Like I said, this scares me. Imagine late at night driving, you hear some child start laughing and a woman just standing on the road. Oh no, I'm good. That's scary for sure. Everybody knows the story of La Llorona, but if you're one of the few who don't, it goes like this. A woman found out her husband was cheating on her, and she took her anger out on her son, drowning him, but grief and regret stuck with her, and her soul is damned to the earth. Her cries can be heard if you're around a body of water late at night in New Mexico or even Mexico. If she sees you, she will try drowning you. This story of La Llorona always scared me when I was younger. It's a sad tale, but it's such an iconic urban legend. It's still a mystery as to if it's real or not, so I'm putting this one on the scary tier. Clara Crane, happy mother and wife to her family, until her daughter died in an accident on the fields of her farm. Clara blamed her husband for her death and laced a few caramel candies and gave them to him. He ate them and he died. She was found guilty and was sent to an asylum. She was released some time later due to overcrowding. After she was released, children began to go missing and candy would appear on their doorsteps with Candy Lady written on them. A sheriff's body was found with candy stuffed in his pockets. Clara was supposedly responsible for this, but she was never seen again. Really cool, both tragic and creepy, this one definitely spooks me. San Haven Sanatorium, a place where a lot of suffering occurred back when there were no antibiotics for tuberculosis. It killed many in this facility. Malpractices and messed up surgeries would take place here. Years later, it turned to a home for developmentally disabled people. Allegedly, they were mistreated. Eventually, the place was closed for good in 1987 and left abandoned and now stands as a haunted, rattled place with angry spirits. Also, I'm pretty sure if you go there now, you'll find some questionable people. And the amount of suffering that took place there, it's sad. That's some terrifying stuff. This one has talks of suicide, so feel free to skip if you want. Between December of 2014 and March 2015, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation saw an alarmingly increase in suicides, with over 100 attempts and only 9 successful ones. With young people suddenly taking their lives, it was a concern. Many believed this was the work of Walking Sam, a dark, evil entity who convinces teenagers to kill themselves, with other victims hanging from his arms. Real or not, please talk to someone if you're struggling with depression. This is just messed up. In 2013, the people of Nebraska were being terrorized by giant radioactive hornets who were mutated from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in Japan. Supposedly, the hornets had venom strong enough to kill a human, but this was quickly proven to be fake since an Asian hornet has never been spotted in Nebraska. I mean, we'll probably get some, some like later on in the world when it turns to a fallout wasteland, but for now, not scary at all. Be careful hiking late at night in Kansas because the Hamburger Man might come out. I can't even say that with a straight face. The Hamburger Man is such a funny name. It's a man who kills people and turns them into hamburgers. The only Hamburger Man I know is Mary McCheese. So this one is not scary, just kind of dumb. Many people have gone missing in Beaver Dunes Park in Oklahoma. It is said that mysterious green lights flash at night along with people camping there, reportedly seeing strange military government men digging around the site. This place has been enshrouded with mystery since the 1500s. Some people believe aliens have something to do with this, while personally me, anything to do with men in black is spooky enough. Deep in the northern woods of Minnesota, a creature called the Wendigo lives, waiting for an unsuspecting hiker to fall victim to its cannibalistic hunger. Wendigos are extremely popular in pop culture. They're such a cool creature with many different iterations. I am terrified of Wendigos. Thanks a lot until dawn. So yes, this one is scary for sure. A giant 13-foot-tall angel statue, no, not a me, is on display in Oakland Cemetery in Iowa. It is said that this statue is cursed, and if you even look at it in the eyes, you will be cursed. If you make fun of it, you'll die in seven years from that encounter. Finally, if you kiss the statue, you will die instantly right on the spot. Mm, yeah, this doesn't do it for me. I mean, come on, the statue is really cool, but the cursed part of it, I don't buy. Plus, the reason why it turned darker was because over time, the color oxidized, so this one doesn't keep me up at night. This is actually crazy that this turned out to be real. In 2003, a couple stayed in a motel for a couple of days, and under their bed, a body was decomposing. They left, and over time, the body kept stinking up that room. The smell became horrible, and the body was found by police. The Capri Motel was demolished because of many other unfortunate incidents that occurred there. So yeah, this is definitely disturbing. I hope this never happens to me or to you. Back in 1954 in Arkansas lived a boy named Gerald Floyd Bettis who would catch stray dogs and cats and do horrible experiments on them and eventually kill them. He would also do horrible things to his parents. He locked his parents in his attic and kept them there for years, treating them like animals. Eventually his father died and Gerald was arrested for it. He died in prison from a drug overdose. If you go to his house now or pass by it, you'll see strange light flickers and noises. You know what, you can keep this type of stuff. These type of legends with abuse and just horrible torturing stuff is scary to me. 
deep in the woods of Louisiana, a group of people known as the Grunch reside. Described as albino dwarf people who are cannibals, who ended up this way because of how people were unaccepting a different type of people back then, so they were forced to live deep in the woods away from society. When you think about this story, it's kind of sad, and back then, people with diseases were used as sideshow circus acts, which is just messed up, so not scary, just people being mean. The Hudag from Wisconsin is a small green razor clawed beast that many people believe just want to be left alone, which honestly, I can respect that, and that's really it, of course. I mean, it's not scary. The Kelly Green Men is an incident in where a family supposedly saw little green men, aka aliens, where the aliens were attacking their farmhouse and the family had to have a two hour shootout with them. Sometime later, the aliens left, and the family reported that the aliens were half the size of a human person. You know, even though this story does sound really sketchy, I'm gonna mark this one as scary because aliens are scary no matter how they look like. The year is 1817 in the thick wilderness of Tennessee. A family began to hear strange noises and were met with the Bell Witch, a woman who could shapeshift and be in multiple places at once. In one instance, the witch was seen turning into a dog-human hybrid and eventually the father of the family passed away due to the Bell Witch poisoning him. After his passing, the Bell Witch disappeared, and to this day, if you visit her house, you may experience something for yourself. Honestly, these type of tales do kind of creep me out because of the shapeshifting part. It reminds me of skinwalkers, which are really scary. The Mercuritus outbreak in Mississippi was a disease that made women homicidal. How they got this disease was through men, but how did men get this? Well, by consuming a lot of lead paint, which was very common back then. In doing so, a chemical would be released, and any woman nearby would get the urge to kill every man they see. Seeing no cure for this, supposedly the medical community decided to throw this one up as just an urban legend. Personally, this is kind of scary. Imagine, out of nowhere, a group of women just want to murder men for no reason? That'd be pretty scary. The Spanish flu, a horrible pandemic, hit the state of Alabama pretty hard, causing so much death and sadness. In fact, so many children were killed by this disease that it is said that their bodies are buried next to this playground in Maple Hill Cemetery. And at night, you can hear children playing for one last time. Once again, anything to do with ghost kids gets an automatic spooky spot. A preacher who wanted to spread the word of God was not allowed to do so in front of a market. In anger, he cursed the store and said that it would be destroyed by a great wind. And wouldn't you know it, the market was indeed destroyed, leaving only one thing, a pillar. Supposedly, many people have tried removing the pillar, only to be met with death shortly after. My advice, don't go touching random pillars if you're in Georgia. Personally, me, I don't believe this one, so I'm not really scared of it. I still wouldn't touch it, though. On August 14th, 1955, a giant claw-like hand reached out to grab a woman named Naomi Johnson, and in an attempt tried pulling her down into the water over and over again. It was the Green Clawed Beast. A man from the Air Force was seen close by. He helped Naomi. She ran her home. Sometime later, the same man came to her house and told her to never speak of the incident. Well, kind of late for that, don't you think? And since then, no sighting of the Green Clawed Beast have been made. Some spooky stuff. You know, I have a fear of drowning, and if this thing tries killing me by drowning me, then heck yeah, that'd scare me. One of the most famous urban legends on this list, Walt Disney Frozen Body Under Disney World. Now, everyone knows this one, but it's really mystery. Sure, people will say of course it's not, but come on, it's Disney. They'll tell you anything. I find this one not scary at all, but really interesting. I guess time will tell if this one's true. Uh, of course, Ohio would have this one. The Ohio Frogman is literally just a giant frog. You know, I laughed when I first saw this. Both this and the Hoodag are the worst thumbs down. The Nain Rogue, an evil red dwarf, is said to have cursed the entire state of Detroit, and that every time it is spotted, something bad will follow. It has reportedly been seen multiple times in 1967 and 1976, that being the last time it was seen. The city of Detroit welcomes it, though, throwing a parade celebrating the creature every spring, so that's a nice wholesome ending, which gives this a not scary ranking. This next one isn't even an urban legend, but kind of sad. The story of Raymond Robinson, a man who was severely disfigured when he was 8 years old due to an electrical line accident. This left him with no face. He would take nighttime walks to avoid being seen. Because of these walks, some people turned him into an urban legend, the Green Man or Charlie No-Face. It's messed up how this was a real man and people just tarnished his name for laughs. Anyways, you can guess, obviously this isn't something anyone should be scared of. The Boo Hag from South Carolina is said to steal people's soul and energy while they sleep. They also are said to wear people's skin, like I mentioned earlier, anything skinwalker related is scary, and boo hags aren't pleasant to look at either, so yeah. Back in 1953 and 1954, many animals were mysteriously killed. The animal that was killing them was allegedly the beast of Blandon Boro. Many specialists claim this animal to be a giant wildcat, but its true species has never been identified, and the way it killed its victims was also very gruesome too. It most likely was a mountain lion or something of all the sorts, but like I said, a mountain lion is still scary as is. 
another extremely famous urban legend, the Mothman, who was seen in Point Pleasant described as a giant Mothman humanoid with bright red eyes. Wherever he is seen, horrible things are soon to follow. The most famous sighting was when it was spotted on the Silver Bridge in 1928. Soon after, it collapsed, killing over 40 people. Could this be the curse of the Mothman? I love the Mothman. Yes, he's scary. Look at him. The Bunny Man, first seen on October 19, 1970, and a couple days later, it is said to kill anyone who passes under the Southern Railway overpass in Virginia. Also known as Bunny Man Bridge, police never found the real man or the bunny suit in question, and to this day, this whole thing is still a mystery. Bunnies are cute and all, but the Bunny Man isn't. If I saw a scary man with a hatchet and a bunny mask trying to kill me, I'd for sure run away. Another famous urban legend because of this picture, the Goat Man, who originated from Maryland, was responsible for the killings of many dogs. He was made in a lab and escaped captivity. Because of his hate against humans, he terrifies and kills anyone he encounters. The Goat Man sounds really scary and even looks scary. I remember when I first seen this image and it definitely spooked me. A ghostly lighthouse that represents land and safety to lost sailors, but when approached it disappears, leading you to your death. It's kind of sad how just when you think you're safe, you're actually dead. Being one of the weaker ones on this list, I'll at least give it a scare rank because of the false sense of hope. The Jersey Devil, another famous urban legend that the story goes that her mother was fed up and angry that she kept having children. On her 13th, she screamed and wished that the devil would take the child. Well, her wish became true because what was born was the Jersey Devil, a half-demon goat thing that looked really cool in Fallout, by the way. Yeah, this thing is scary looking. Goats in general are creepy, and it can fly. That makes it even worse. In New York, an escaped asylum patient roams the streets of Staten Island, looking for children to abduct and murder. At first, this sounds like a classic tale that kids tell each other, but in fact, this actually happened. It was a man named Andrew Rand, the janitor in a school for children with disabilities. He murdered a girl with Down syndrome and supposedly murdered countless others, though their bodies were never found. Currently, he is serving time and will not be released for parole until 2037. Do I even have to say it? Of course, this is scary. The Alaskan Triangle, which is a very mysterious place, over 16,000 people have gone missing due to this area. As to why is unknown, it could be the bad weather, some say aliens, others say it's a portal to another dimension. Honestly, I don't even know what to make of this place, but you better believe I won't be going to Alaska anytime soon. Annabelle needs no introduction. A doll that is possessed by a vicious demon who on the surface doesn't look threatening at all, but don't let that fool you. Yeah, you couldn't pay me to keep Annabelle for a day, not even an hour. Back in 1892, a panic spread in Rhode Island that the disease tuberculosis, back then known as consumption, was a disease caused by vampires, all because one family, one after another, were infected. Most of the bodies of the family were exhumed. All were decomposed but one, Mercy Olive, which back then proved that she was a vampire. Now, obviously, I don't buy this stuff. Her body was probably well kept because of the cold temperatures. I'm not wasting time on this. Another small beast named the Pudgy Woodgy. No, throw this in the bin with the others. Three thumbs down. In 1887, it was believed that if the elders are sick, you can simply just put them outside in the winter so they can freeze up and be preserved. And when the springtime came, you could just simply let them thaw out. And what's messed up is people actually did this, which is really, was not scary at all, which is sad. Like, what? A woman was being put to death for being a sorcerer in Maine. Before she was killed, she cursed the man who put her to death, Jonathan Buck. This one is once again a weak one from this list. Proven to be fake, it's just kind of uninteresting and not scary at all. The only witch to be found guilty in New Hampshire, Ewins Goody Cole, who was put to death because people thought she was a witch and her spirit remains and it is said that the mishappenings that happened in the area is due to her. She also has been seen wandering, looking for her own memorial grave. Once again, I can't believe people actually thought women could be witches. Not scary, just kind of sad. And there it is, every United States state urban legend. And while some are actually kind of creepy, others aren't. Like I said earlier, I know I couldn't have possibly pleased everyone with the urban legends that I found and that I picked. So leave them down below. And also thank you for the support of my channel. Please make sure to like and subscribe. All right, take care and be safe out there and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.